Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day everyone. In this second video, let's continue learning about the aggregate supply before we discuss the interaction between both aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Similar to the demand definition, the aggregate supply curve shows the quantity of all goods and services produced or supply, not demand of course, in the economy at any given aggregate price level. We know that factors of production such as labor, capital, including human capital, and natural resources, as well as production technology, affect the production of output. Since all of them are non-price factors, so just like before, if either one changes, it will shift the curve. The AS curve will shift. In chapter 25, we stop the discussion here. We're not talking about the aggregate price. In the classical economics, long-run economic output has nothing to do with price. No matter what the price level is, economy will be at its natural level of output or the level of output when unemployment is at its normal rate. And with this in mind, we then have the vertical long-run S-curve. In the short run, however, the situation is a little bit different. Aggregate price or P does affect the S-curve. Production, somehow, will increase following the increase in price. Short run ice curve then becomes upward sloping like this. We'll soon talk about the three macroeconomics theory explaining this. Moreover, we will see also that the expected price level or PE here would become another non-price factor that could also shift the SR, SRAS curve. Okay. Here are the SRAS theories. We have the sticky wage theory, the sticky price theory, and the misperception theory. Despite the difference among the three, the theories end up at the same positive correlation between price and output, that is the upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. The explanation of each theory could be better understood by introducing these uh, supply equations. Quantity of supply, or Y, equals to natural level of output, the or Y bar, it is the long run output, plus A, certain coefficient, multiply with the difference between actual price level and the expected uh, price level. Or simply said it, Y equals to Y bar, plus A, multiply with P minus PE. Here we introduce the natural level of output, P bar, and expected price level or PE that could affect the S curve. And of course, the key correlation that is between the supply Y and the price level P. The sticky wage theory emphasizes that in the short run, wage tends to be sticky or slow to adjust to economic conditions. It may be due to working contract between employer and labor. So when P falls, for instance, making it lower than uh, expected P or PE, real wage will be higher and bigger than firm's real wage target, since wage is sticky. Because of higher real wage, firms will demand less labor, resulting in less output produced by the firms. And look, the lower the P, um, the lower will be the output and vice versa. One reason of upward sloping SRAS curve. From the equation, we can see P falling is here and P minus PE becomes negative. Then Y will be lower or smaller than Y bar. According to the uh, sticky price uh, theory, the unexpected low price will affect firms that have set the price level in advance using PE or expected price. They have set the price, but they cannot adjust the price immediately in the short run because of high menu costs. So when actual price falls, their price or uh, PE will still be high, making their products more expensive, thus declining their sales. With lower sales, firms respond with producing less output, which also means lower employment. Look again, the lower P, the lower the output, and vice versa. Another reason of upward sloping SRAS curve. Similar to the first theory, from the equation we can see P falling is here, P 
P uh, minus PE becomes negative, then Y again will be lower or smaller than Y bar. And how about the last theory? The misperception or the imperfect information theory. According to this theory, individual firm only know the price of its output in the short run, but not the overall price level. The information is lagging here. Therefore, when actually the overall price level falls, the firm may just, real, may, may just first realize this, the price decline has happened only to its output. The firm then thinks that the price of its output is relatively lower compared to the price of other output in the economy. So it is less rewarding for the firm. The firm then ma it then makes the firm to reduce its output. So again, following this theory, lower, lower, price, uh, lower price results in lower output level, vice versa, because all firms will do the same. Hence, again, we have an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. So what's the conclusion? All the theories suggest the same. Price moves in the same direction with output, which means an upward sloping supply curve. All the theories also explain that the situation is just temporary or it only occurs in the short run conditions. In the long run, the situation will just be the same and similar to that explained in the classical model, which uh, will be no longer sticky neither will be the price and there will be no more imperfect information in, in the long run. With all the complete adjustments made by all firms, price level in the long run will be equal to the expected price level or P equals to PE in our equations. Therefore, long run output will always be equal to the natural level of output. And long run level of output will, will no longer be affected by price or we are going to have the vertical RAS curve. Okay, so that's the end of the second video about the aggregate supply. My next video will be about the short run fluctuation due to changes in aggregate demand and or aggregate supply. Thank you for your attention and please watch my next video to gain the understanding about the aggregate demand supply interaction. See you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.